जो है रहमान सर क्या हुई स्पीकिंग हेलो सर सर सुकुमार स्पीकिंग सर कैन यू हेयर मी सर यस सर हाँ शेवी स्टार्ट सर हाँ यस सर वी वी विल स्टार्ट सर Okay, good morning, everyone. So I welcome you all for uh, our fifth day FTP. Uh, so I am very happy to uh, uh, invite Dr. Mahendesh, and also I am very happy to uh, say welcome address about him. So yes, Mr. Dr. Mahendesh holds a B. E. M. Tech and PhD, Computer Science from Vishwasharya Technical University, Karnataka. He is currently working as associate professor in the department of ENC at SGA BIT, Bengaluru. He has around 13 plus years of experience in teaching, including four years in research. His research interests include digital image processing and computer vision, and pattern recognition and machine learning. He has published more than 35 plus articles in peer-reviewed international journals, journals as well as conferences. And delivered various guest lectures across several engineering colleges. He has been a recognized resource person for several FTPs and online webinars, and received funds from KSCST and Best Project Awards at state and national level exhibition for being guided projects. He has been served as organizing chair, symposium, and session chair. And also a reviewer for several reputed international conferences and journals, and awarded outstanding reviewer award in Springer International Conferences at NMA, MIT, NITT, Karnataka. Uh, thank you all. So once again, I welcome uh, Dr. Magandesh, and now I hand over the session to Dr. Magandesh. Sir, please have a nice day to all. yeah uh, thank you very much for such a wonderful introduction and uh, uh, i welcome all participants uh, research scholars faculty students and all uh, research fraternity today is a uh, uh, most auspicious day in three different ways like uh, <clears throat> today is a uh, lunar eclipse and uh, i hope uh, everybody are safe during this pandemic situation and uh, the second thing is uh, today's guru pournami and i wish you all a very happy guru pournami and the third day uh, though it is the end of the fifth day that is the last day of your faculty development program i have been watching uh, previous faculty development programs from the other uh, resource persons it was a wonderful and uh, though it is a end i would say it is a beginning of uh, the new research era from tomorrow onwards since you have come across uh, several <coughs> application tools uh, mostly on antennas and uh, real time operating systems embedded systems iot big data cloud and yeah so many things has been covered of course all of my uh, uh, faculty a uh, uh, <coughs> friend uh, dr anita was also a research person uh, Two three days before, I guess. Okay, and today, and the third one. Yeah, of course, I said like today is the beginning of the new research. So let me just uh, uh, again, I formally welcome you all and good morning, one and all present here. So this, I I'll, I'll not be uh, going in depth or uh, in detailed presentation. Uh, this will be a very brief presentation what I have prepared for this webinar, keeping in mind two things. One is Uh, for the beginner's sake, and the second one who have already started working on image retrieval system or digital image processing problems. So for them, uh, maybe you may have to wait for some time to uh, get more information after going through the beginner's phase. Okay, so this uh, 
<coughs> presentation would be divided into two phases. Uh, I'll slowly start with the uh, at the beginners level so that uh, the others might feel bored who are already into this business, like image digital system or digital image processing problems. So, yeah, I already have a, a very good introduction from one of your colleagues. And uh, these are the contents which I'll be covering. Introduction, computer vision and pattern recognition. Uh, of course, these two things are uh, very important aspects in order to explore more solution towards image retrieval system problems and few commercial existing systems in market okay, and challenges and objectives. And we'll see like how the general image retrieval system appears. And uh, as a demonstration for the demonstration purpose, I'll be using, uh, I'll be designing or developing an image retrieval system using MATLAB I, will, I have selected a very simple feature that is a color mean, and I shall show you the end-to-end -end, uh, design, how the image tool systems can be designed at the very core level, like uh, at uh, an introductory level, okay? And simple GUI as a complementary at the end of the session, that is graphical user interface uh, for image tool system, and some of the future research avenues if you people are uh, interested and uh, going far from this uh, <clears throat> after this FTP so that you can uh, take up some of these issues and you can try to solve it. Uh, I would uh, like to start with the simple statement. A picture is worth a thousand words. In fact, uh, you can, we can, it's very difficult to define a picture in words, okay? And also it evokes the subtle irony, the contradictory yeah. statement when a picture cannot be defined in thousand words. Likewise, you cannot annotate or you cannot simply define an image in words. I request all the participants, please mute your video. So please don't disturb the resource person, please. Yeah, uh, thank you for your interruption. And as I was saying, a picture is worth a thousand words. It's, it is becoming very difficult for us to annotate image with the words. Why? Because when I look at an image, I would see, uh, according to my perception, I would define that image in words. Okay. So with the development of internet and digital media techniques, like uh, you see the CMOS sensors, technology has improved, mobile phones are equipped with the high resolution or multi-resolution image cameras. And you started acquiring image and this is the result of increasing digital image connection in the World Wide Web servers or in the storage devices. So uh, there is an, a huge, uh, there is a huge, uh, 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 what do you say, like an uh, importance in order to generate various technologies or techniques for storing, very importantly, browsing, efficiently indexing, as I said, uh, to annotate with the words and searching and retrieving images. So it has become very important and essential task for large image archives. So this, this is a major problem which is happening in and around us. This leads to an existence of image retrieval system and has spurred a significant interest in the research community like digital image processing. There's a, a small type, typological error, uh, just kindly ignore it, and computer vision and pattern recognition. So. A digital image processing, as I said, like you're trying to analyze the image, a digital image using some tools and techniques. Computer vision, you're trying to uh, make your machine learn or enact as a human. So you're just trying to embed a vision to your machines. And pattern recognition, trying to identify the patterns in a data and try to retrieve the data or try to retrieve the image here to be specific. So an image retrieval system is a basically a computer system for browsing, searching, and retrieving images from a large database or from a server. Uh, most traditional and common methods of image retrieval utilizes some method of adding metadata such as captioning or keywords. You may see the figure one. This is a text-based image retrieval system where the keyword was an input to the image retrieval system that is a text-based image retrieval system where user has an intention to retrieve the images of an elephant, okay? So he has keyed in the elephant word in order to look for the uh, relevant images in the database. Likewise, we are very much interested today in today's session that is on content-based image retrieval system 
where I as I've already said, I've started the session saying that a picture defines or picture can be defined with a thousand words. So elephant is not sufficient for me to retrieve the images of elephant with a large tusk or with a large big ears or something like that. So that becomes a perceptual, that becomes a very perceptual uh, intention or intuition to retrieve the images. So what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to give an image as an input to the system which retrieve the similar images and the image which I've been given as an input to the system is uh, based on my intuition or based upon my interest. So this is very important where you have to extract the features from the image and then try to retrieve from the large image archers. And uh, carefully observe in the left half of this slide that is in text-based search, uh, it is very much laborious and time consuming and expensive also in order to manually annotate the images. See, all these images of elephants has been annotated or indexed by the keyword called elephant. That is why it has been matched based upon the text search and it's very difficult for any uh, 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 person to uh, uh, manually give the text or give the file names. Okay, so that is also uh, really very challenging. And uh, when I think about it, like that's just in order to uh, reduce human efforts, we are just trying to give an input to input as an image and getting an output as an image. Uh, let me just uh, switch to the Google, uh, uh, the Chrome, where, uh, the, where, where possibly you may get some uh, good uh, detailed explanation. So here, uh, very simple, I'm just trying to screen the same work keyword called elephant. And I've created a keyword elephant and I can have received the elephant key. Okay, Those are, there are so many images of elephants. Uh, maybe uh, not matching my intuition because I was uh, basically looking for uh, a Mysore uh, elephant which carries an ambari of uh, Chamundi, uh, 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 what do you say, Chamundi Devi. So here I don't have that elephant here. So uh, that becomes a very much uh, intuitive. So now, uh, can I give uh, some image? So you can see the icon here, which is a camera, right? Which is a camera icon. If you just click on it, uh, you can upload an image of your intuition. So I will just choose a small image. Let me see what is the response of your Google with respect to my image, which is with respect to my intuition I'm looking for. So I have an uh, image on my, yeah, I just uh, trying to browse. I hope it is visible. All these applications are visible for you. Uh, one of your organizer may speak if it is visible. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, fine. Yeah. So I would just like to uh, take up the image. Uh, yeah, one second. Uh, here I have an anchor image. Yeah, yeah. This is an anchor image. 3i underscore 13v. Now, if I just try to upload this image and ask Google to retrieve similar images, yeah, good. Uh, so now we can see the many retrieved images. But I don't have anchor inside this. I have anchor here, which was perceptual, which was intuitive in nature. But I have a similar patterns retrieved. Yeah, Google is doing good. Yeah. Uh, extraordinary but the thing is the pattern has been uh, uh, taken but the problem was with this anchor my intention was to extract the images which are similar to anchor but it has given me the pattern right so this is uh, one of the failure of image retrieval system this was a small example which i wanted to show you on uh, a live so that was an example okay so going back to our slide so here, the content is very important. What content you're trying to extract? What feature you're trying to extract? Okay, uh, The feature of anchor, the feature of uh, uh, whether I have to remove the background, I have to separate the background from the foreground. So there are so many aspects in image retrieval system, which we shall see one by one. So what is the content? So what is content act actually that you're looking for? Uh, image content can be described by visual information in terms of features and in terms of semantics. You can see semantics is also there where whether uh, the user which was uh, looking for a particular image, has it, has it been retrieved or not, that, is, that becomes semantic, that becomes very perceptual. And visual information in terms of features, like uh, the most predominant feature is color, uh, shape, uh, spatial locations or a region inside the image, and texture. See, once you look at the image, you will see all these things. And you can see color, 
you can see the shape of the object you can see the region or location where it is located the object or uh, your region of interest where it is located and the texture of course you cannot uh, feel it on the image but you have so many algorithms so that you can try to extract the texture features and uh, you have some details with respect to color shape uh, location uh, and texture you can extract uh, color using histogram sets moments of course we will be uh, doing a color based image retrieval system uh, towards the end of this session uh, that would be based upon color i i am not going to explain about shape or as well as texture in meanwhile i'll give some ideas like how you're going to extract shape and texture parallelly uh, there are local and global region based boundary based structural spectral probabilistic approach of finding textures so with this preamble so we are having an aim to develop an intelligent and automatic image retrieval system with some following uh, with some objectives you have to understand the image user's need and information seeking behavior this of course you can obtain using a relevance feedback method and semantic gap as i have said your machine understands the language of ones and zeros and you understand high level features machine understands low level features there is a huge gap between these two low level features and high level features i call it a semantic gap and you have to reduce this gap you have to make machines understand by extracting visual contents okay like color shape texture and spatial layout and give it to machine and the machines will learn and you call it as a visual content descriptors but the machines will learn the pattern of these different content and of course this uh, this will be uh, used in order to extract or retrieve the image which is seek by the user you can also uh, obtain the local features by adopting segmentation techniques and extract local features to facilitate region based image retrieval this is an, a very upcoming research nowadays uh, been used extensively in uh, uh, smart surveillance systems like an uh, active or intelligent surveillance systems right local based image uh, retrieval systems so our prime focus is to develop image retrieval system which fills the semantic gap remember and to retrieve semantically and perceptually similar images so what are the applications so after uh, doing uh, after uh, implementing or developing an algorithm so i have an application like you can index the images as i said you can uh, automatically try to give the keywords to the file name saying that okay this content okay this is the image name this content is the object this content is the uh, animal or something like that and likewise you can just try to have automate your indexing system art collections uh, in san francisco they are using it for a uh, fine arts museum and the uh, crime prevention geographical information and remote sensing systems okay and medical diagnosis like uh, brain tumor segmentation or uh, uh, iris detection and uh, there are several uh, image acquisition devices like x ray ct scan uh mris okay so uh, the all those things gives you an image in different resolutions so it is in multi resolution okay and then you just try to extract some features and try to say okay this is a a tumor of this much size or shape and of course i have already given an example of world wide web and military applications and uh, surveillance applications or surveillance systems so one of my friend is doing uh, abnormal activity detection or scene categorization uh, just imagine that you have a laptop uh, a ipad uh, a mouse or a keyboard and a mobile phone on a table so uh, identifying these objects and trying to correlate between these objects and trying to define a scene or a situation okay this is a reading table or this is a work table or this is a work space so that work space is a solution of your retrieval system so designing or defining a scene or scene categorization based upon the objects so likewise surveillance application you can just define okay these this this many persons are involved in unusual activity and the unusual activity has been detected so there are so many applications okay a uh, few of the existing commercial systems uh, google i have excluded it from this list uh, you have yahoo picture gallery 
and hotbot uh, that is a keyword based search yahoo is using keyword based search uh, this information was collected based uh, on the objects uh, maybe they have so like my surveillance application okay. and image just find them. okay this 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 is a search for keyword keys and you should and then it uses alpha numerical keys it is a text based again ADN, like that is a site and digital library. So yeah, this is one which you are looking for. It is based on text. Uh, few of the existing commercial systems and uh, regions. Google, I have excluded it from this list. Alta Vista for uh, the final. Uh, you have yeah, Yahoo Picture Gallery good, and Hotbot. Uh, recommended uh, that is a keyword based search. Shape, Yahoo is using keyword based search. Uh, this information was collected by an organization. And what is the name of the organization? Team Color. Uh, in my mind, I have to say that this is based on the search and the organ keys. And you should add it to your category. ஒரு Netra from IBM it uses segmentation as i said it's a region based approach plus feature content you first try to segment your region of interest then try to extract features out of it so it makes some meaning now it gives you some meaning and those features are utilized to increase the efficiency of the perceptual image retrieval system so i am adding the term called perceptual image retrieval system just in order to make sure that whatever image the user is looking for is perceptually better okay that the, the rate of perception is increased yeah this is a general image retrieval system uh, uh if you look at this uh, you have a large image data set this is an example data set of uh, caltech 101 or 256 data set and i have extracted uh, you i have used visual content descriptor I have extracted features and I have uh, derived a feature vector. I just like assume that I have uh, color means of all images. Okay, I have a mean. I have taken a mean of uh, the color of all images and I have created a vector. So this is a feature vector. Okay, this is a feature database. You can say now user will give a query information. I am looking for an airplane image. so now here i will again extract the color mean and i will form a query feature vector so i have two feature vectors now one is feature database the second one is query feature vector now i have to find the similarity between the feature vector as well as feature database so now if you try to get the similarity and the least value after the similarity measure would be the relevant image according to your algorithm so i will i will just try to evaluate the similarity distance between feature vector as well as feature database and i try to retrieve the images with respect to the least value or the least similar value which has been taken after the difference between the feature vector that is query feature vector as well as feature database remember feature database will be having so many images and so many features so this was the general block diagram of image retrieval system i'm just uh, very quickly running through this slides why because i need to take up the issues with respect to uh, the more on hands on so that i'll be reading and individual images and uh, will be creating this feature database and then will be giving this uh, query information and again i'll extract the color feature and then generate feature vector i will be using euclidean distance as a similarity measure it's a very simple distance measure metric which is used to Uh, measure the similarity between two data, and then based upon the lowest value, the least value, least difference value, I would say that belongs to the feature which is given by the user belongs to a particular image in the database. Okay, uh, so this was an introduction about your image retrieval system. Um, so most of you are familiar with the MATLAB environment. Uh, I guess most of you belong to an engineering domain, so you'll be using this MATLAB. as a high level computational tool and uh, very effective in visualization and application development matlab combines a uh, desktop environment tuned for iterative analysis you can change so many variables and you can just try to have a trial and error combinations and just try to check with your design process uh, programming languages that expresses in matrix and array mathematics directly so 
this already you know uh, matlab programming is dealt in terms of matrix okay matrix data it provides vast library of mathematical functions you have so many functions okay it includes the live editor for creating scripts it can be combined with uh, executable notebook also it provides functions to integrate with c java dot net and microsoft excel i've seen a couple of uh, things uh, uh, like they are trying to integrate matlab with python also uh, this is a matlab desktop just an introductory uh, slide uh, if you click on matlab i am using 2016a right every year uh, the matlab has got two versions in terms of a and b so now the present version is 2020a okay Uh, maybe after july the post july you'll be having 2020b just updating the library functions or library packages that's it okay here uh, you can see command window where i'll be typing the commands and uh, this is an editor window which i'll be using in order to edit the program and directory and workspace and you have many more uh, uh, desktop you can just try to view desktop and you have many options uh, and this is these are the applications of matlab i'll be Uh, using it widely in competition tool in science and engineering along with other fields of uh, physics chemistry and math signal processing and communication image and video processing control systems test and measurement computational finance computational biology yeah, you have statistics and uh, uh, you have hyperspectral image processing uh, so many applications yeah, this is the data set which i was speaking this are very uh important and very benchmark data sets the first one is imagenet the second one is a hand written characters the third one is aircraft birds uh the uh, the fifth one that is a texture data sets that used in fashion designing and other applications quick draw a hand, hand uh, written drawings okay so there are some image uh, retrieval systems where you just try to uh, draw the hand draw the images hand draw the outline of the images and give it to the uh, system it will give you uh, the similar images right with the color shape and textures with that outline and uh, fungi vgg flower traffic signs uh, used in uh, surveillance applications ms coco data sets used for character recognition in a scene and the last one is caltech 101 or 256 this is the example database which i'll be using for my demonstration purpose where you have 101 different types of categories which you can see which is collaged on a single frame you have 101 different types of objects okay and whereas in caltech 256 you have nearly 256 different types of categories or classes i could say it as a class and each class consists of at least 40 images to 800 images at least okay minimum 40 to maximum 800 images so caltech 101 nearly consists of uh, around 9144 images whereas caltech 256 consists of nearly 25000 images yeah i would like to uh, show you the caltech data set so Uh, this is the caltech data set where you can see uh, an example one i underscore one v it is an accordion musical instrument this is the first class and first view remember this uh, notations are very important for me for to demonstrate in uh, coming slides uh, one i underscore one v it represents this is the first class and first view of accordion likewise first class second view you may see uh, in first class fifth view the accordion image been holding by a person the background is completely distracted and accordion is rarely visible and you can see a couple of images are tilted okay couple of images are tilted couple of images like this one i underscore 35v the accordion is rarely visible with respect to background uh, and uh, i have two i underscore 1v which is a second image second class Uh, and i have uh, nearly 800 images so in the first class i had 55 that's what i was mentioning minimum 40 to 800 so this is the second class which i have uh, nearly 800 images of airplane okay uh, 
uh, yeah, you can see I have 800 images of airplane and I have the third object uh, with 40. Likewise, I have nearly 9,166 items or 9,166 9, different images, classes. Okay, so this is my 101st image and 40th view. Remember, I will be calling these images one by one and I'll be extracting the color features and then training your model, then asking a query, uh, assuming that I am a user and I'm looking for a particular image and retrieving the image from the database, trained database. So this will be my uh, image retrieval system using MATLAB. So I'll be following these steps. Carefully uh, uh, remember these steps. So uh, my image retrieval system process is divided into two phases. The first one is training phase. The second one is testing phase. In training phase, I will be reading images from the data set. The first image I read, I extract the means, color means of the image. I have red mean, green mean, and blue mean. If you have an image processing concept, basics of image processing, then you understand any color image would be the superimposition of three matrices of primary colors. One is red, matrix, green, and blue. Once you read the image in MATLAB, you will be having three matrices, right? Well, the first matrix belongs to the red component, second belongs to a green component, third belongs to a blue component. Now, superposition of these colors, these values will give some color. So I call it as a primary color. And I would generate a feature matrix since I am, I'll be reading multiple images. Here in this case, I'll be reading 10 classes and in each class, I'll be reading five images under each class. So I'll be having 50 images and 50 columns, 50 columns for 50 images. And that is my feature matrix. So what is the size of my feature matrix? It is 10 into five, that is equal to 50. In each column, I'll be having three values. That is red bean, green bean, and blue bean belonging to each image. Remember this, okay? And testing phase, I will read a query image, which say user is having an intention to retrieve some image from the database. So again, I will extract color means. Again, it will be in the form of red, green, and blue means, mean values of these three color uh, matrices. And I'll call it as a feature vector. So what is the length of the feature vector? The length of the feature vector is one cross three. Okay, it is one column and three values. What is the length of the feature matrix? The length of the feature matrix is 50 columns with three rows. That is 50 cross three, remember. Okay, and then I would like to measure the distance between the query feature vector, which is one cross three, and the feature matrix, which is 50 cross three, and obtain a least value, least minimum value, minimum distance value from this distance measure calculation and whatever the least value been measured, okay, that image belongs to the retrieved image. So that, that will be the retrieved class. So finding or assigning the class label for the least value, least minimum value after this distance measure calculation. Uh, so after uh, doing this, we will write the code, we'll write the code line by line. So once this has been executed, uh, we will try to create a simple GUI for image retrieval system, which would be appearing like this. So we will create this application at the end of this session. And uh, yeah, experimental procedure and evaluation, I'll come back later. So we shall uh, switch to the MATLAB. Uh, I think you are familiar with this MATLAB tool. Uh, this consists of as I said, command window, and uh, say if I type some commands here, it is taking some time, okay. Okay, fine. It is 
taking some time. Well, anyhow, we'll just uh, try to manage the show with this uh, very low bandwidth. Now, uh, let us come back to the session. Like, uh, this command window where uh, is used to type the command. Say, for example, if I want to read an image, I would simply say a is equal to I am read. I am read is a function and just give the path of that image. So what is the path of the image? So I just go back to uh, my Caltech 10 data, uh, database. I have uh, some images which has been kept here in this folder. I shall copy the path C colon users Mahal desktop Caltech 10 database. So this is the path which I'll be uh, copying and I shall simply paste it here. And what is the image? Which image you're trying to uh, read? So I'm trying to read the image of, okay, this airplane, say for example, two underscore two V. So it, it has to be read by its name. Okay, so I'll be reading the image by its name, by its file name. So two underscore two V dot dpg. So image can be read if the file or the program is located within the same folder where the image is located, you can simply read it by the file name or else go to the path, copy the path and call by the image name. Okay. So now once I read an image, so now what is A? A is the image which has been read by using imread function and the image which has been read is stored in A. So now I just I am just uh, surprised to see uh, curious to see what is the size of A. So now A is a variable which has got some value. Okay, You can see in the workspace also, the size is already uh, given here. A is equal to 184 cross 401 cross 3 in uint 8 integer. Okay, So size of A would be 184 rows, 401 columns and 3 matrices. That's This is what I was talking about. There are 3 matrices. The first matrix is the red filtered matrix, second is a green, third one is a blue, which are the primary colors and which will create the superimposition of these colors will create another color. Okay. Uh, now, if I want to reduce the size of the image, I can use uh, the function called uh, I am resize. I am just assigning this, uh, this value to B. Okay. I will resize, uh, the resized image will be assigned to Let's say B. So I am resize. B is equal to I am resize. So what I want to resize? I have to resize my A uh, to what? To what dimension? Say I want to resize it for 10 cross 10. Okay. So if I say I am resize A to 10 cross 10. Now if I uh, it's taking some some time. Okay. Now if I see what is size of B? Yeah. Now it is 10 cross 10 cross T. Let me show you uh, the A, the first image that is A without resize. Uh, uh, I request coordinator uh, if 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 there is an interruption or if you, if you are not this function windows are not visible. Just let me know. Okay, is it visible? Everything is fine, sir. Okay, fine. So this is a figure window which shows you the image which has been read. Okay. Now I want to see. I am show B. Uh, yeah, the reduced image. So now this is a resized image. You can see this figure window. Yeah, this is very small now. Yeah, this is very very small. This very, uh, and in fact the pixels are damaged. The information is damaged. But okay, fine, no problem. I just wanted to uh, show you the resized image. Uh, uh, and if I say B and simply uh, put enter, now we can see three matrices here. Okay, can you see this three matrices? The three matrices, this is red matrix, that is B, colon, colon, one, is nothing but all rows, all columns, and the first matrix, remember, always since I said MATLAB is based upon the matrix uh, uh, data, uh, it always analyzes the data in a matrix form. So this is always a row, the first value separated by comma, second value is column, and the third is a matrix or first matrix or uh, in another dimension, okay, the third dimension. And you can see the red components here. Yeah, this is my red component as well as colon colon two is my green component and colon colon three is my 
blue component yeah now it is good now can i say red is equal to for my convenience i am declaring a variable called red is equal to b of can i say all rows all column and the first matrix now what is red variable red red is equal to this first matrix okay the red is equal to this first matrix can i say green is equal to just for the sake of convenience to remember my variable names i would say uh, colon uh, sorry all rows all columns always whenever you uh, uh, type a commands always go with the basics so you say all rows all columns okay blue is equal to b of all rows all columns and third matrix is it okay i hope this is fine now i have red red green and blue which are three different matrices in image in a color image remember okay uh can i uh, compute a mean red m i'll call it the variable as uh, red m sorry not red m it's red m is equal to i have a function in matlab called mean but since you are evaluating the mean values for the two dimension matrix so i would be using mean 2 mean 2 is nothing but a two dimension mean computation so mean 2 of what mean 2 of red is it okay now if i say mean 2 of red i would get only one value which is a red mean is it okay now if i want to calculate the value for green i would say uh, green m okay green m is equal to mean 2 of green again i got one value if i want to calculate blue okay so no mean 2 of blue i would call it as blue m so now i have three values that is red m green m and blue m which is a mean values remember these are mean values okay a mean value how it is in computed first it will compute uh, the columnar means you will get a row then it will compute row mean and you'll get one value this is how the computations has been done in the matlab first it will go column wise it will compute means and then it will go row wise it will compute the mean value the final mean value now can i say a uh, feature is equal to i put i'll put it in a square bracket this is how i add uh, the values i create a array array of what array of red m space green m space blue m okay uh now you can see what is feature now feature is in terms of row wise okay the first row uh, sorry the first column is uh, red the second column is green the third column is blue which is 210 189 and 164 uh i just uh, ignored the decimal value so that is my mean values of red green blue uh, respectively uh can i can i put it in uh, the column wise yeah i can do it uh, just say transpose of feature okay. uh, sorry uh, just say transpose of feature okay yeah th th this will get transposed my intention is to read multiple images and create multiple columns of mean features i hope you understood this okay this i have done it for one image one single image now let us just go back to the folder what i am trying to do i'll just try to close this because multiple folders will confuse me in fact so i have a mm, i have a folder in caltech 10 uh, i have created a folder called database i have selected i have randomly selected this i have I selected 10 classes i hope you can see so i have 10 classes okay and in each class i have five views to understand in each class i have five different views so first class i have five images of accordion second class i have five images of uh, airplanes uh, anchor and and some cartoon characters and a barrel and a fish and a binocular and a beaver yeah a fish and a beaver there are three animals here okay uh, okay fine and a bonsai tree which is my 10th class okay now what i'll do i will read the multiple images how to read a multiple images in matlab uh since i am not much comfortable uh, in command window why because i cannot go back to uh, the my previous commands and try to edit i cannot edit it see you can see you can hear to this error voice okay uh 
that is a noise so you cannot do it so what you want to do so i will go to the editor new script just click on new script and this is my editor window uh, here i can uh, do whatever i want okay i can just type multiple lines of commands and then i can go back to my previous command i can try to execute this is uh, very good yeah, i can use this editor window yeah so what i should do i should clear the screen first remember uh, there are so many things happening on the uh, command window so i just want to clear the screen i don't want anything on this i want a blank screen so i would say clear screen and then i would like to clear all variables why because i have used a i have used b yeah this is an image these are this is the image data which you have seen i have used b okay this variables has been used so i just want to clear all all variables has been cleared now Uh, suppose if you have any uh, windows like a figure windows been opened luckily there are no figure windows here so i could uh, i want to close all the windows okay so these are some uh, three important uh, commands which uh, everybody quite oftenly uses this on the matlab just in order to clear previous data uh, on your uh, compiler and then next how many number of classes did i mention i am reading from the data set uh, that is 10 right okay yeah it is 10 so i would uh, say uh, uh, i i would copy the same uh, file i would copy the same values here okay oh it is gone okay fine no problem so i would say a is equal to i am read of its duplicating task Just kindly excuse me. I am read off. What I am trying to do here now, uh, I go to database and I read the first image, right? First image. When I underscore one v dot jpg, right? Good. So now I've read the first image and uh, I want to calculate red. Yeah, I have to save it first. I have to save it. Uh, save it, and I have already a couple of files. Okay, save it. Uh, my fdp okay. so this is my underscore fdp so now i say uh, red is equal to a of it's just a repetitive task i am doing this uh, colon and green is equal to a of all rows all column second matrix and uh, blue is equal to A of I'm not trying to resize the image. Remember, I'm just trying to take all the uh, values inside the image. Blue is equal to yeah. Fine, I'm done with this. Now I have to calculate uh, red mean, right? R E D M is equal to yeah. It is mean two mean two of red. Now just try. Let me copy this. Call this as blue M, and here let me change to green, and this is blue. And then what I did, I have calculated the feature. I call it as a feature. Okay, feature is equal to is equal to inside a square bracket. This is how you create an array. I uh, have R E D M space. Green M space blue M, okay. And I have transposed it. Yeah, I have transposed. You can transpose it here only directly. No problem. Okay. And now, if you run this program, I should uh, get I should get the transposed value of this feature. Yeah, I'm getting it. Right, image. Now, what I want to do, I have to go with the second image, right? So this is second image. I, I hope you can see the changes. I am I just replace that this value, this view value one. I change this to two, and this will be my second image. Okay, the second image uh, features are different. Like I, if I change the class value, okay, second uh, class, second image, so you may see the feature values are different. Okay, so now, but I want to do it iteratively. So only these two values are getting changed. Two underscore two v. is getting changed only this first integer 
and this second value. So what I have to do? Let me copy this as a source. This is a source, right? So can I can I call this as a source? So what I do is I simply say control X, put it here, and assign a variable to this string. So now source is a string. Okay, source is a string. Can I simply read this as source? Yeah, good. So this is working fine. And see this source is this, and the feature is this. Fine, no problem. Can I? So uh, here it is a source. So this is an iterative process here. So if you want to read multiple images, see, can you have I'm changing this manually? If I want to make it alternate, uh, sorry, automate this. So what I'm going to do, uh, I'll be having for i as uh, the value from uh, 1 to 10, OK? So i will be from 1 to 10. And for uh, j, uh, j will be for the views. j will be from 1 to 5. Is it OK? So for i to j, and I'll put some end here, why? Right? Because I have to close the loop. Let me close the loop here only. No. Uh, I have to end one for the i outer loop. The second one is for the inner loop. Good. It's done. So I created a loop where I'll be reading 10 classes. This is an outer loop with respect to class. In each class, I'll be reading multiple views with respect to this two. This is views, and this is a class value. Uh, can I place it here inside this? I'll place this here because I want to change the source, right? Uh, I want to make it iterative. Source is equal to. And here, what is that you want to give? Now I want to give it as i and this as j. But it's not uh, recommended, right? Because strings cannot be manipulated here. Yeah? It's very difficult to manipulate a string. So what I have to do? I have to cut short this, okay? I have to cut short this. So I'll make this as a source. Uh, uh, this as a source, uh, I, I'll make it as a path. Yeah, that's wonderful. I'll make it as a path. Okay. Now, what is my source? My source is equal to, I'll concatenate two strings, str, cat is a function, where I can concatenate path as well as this i is red, right? Remember the path. See, this is my path. This should appear in each iteration. Okay. And so what is there after this path? I have this integer value, right? But this integer value has to be added to the string. So I will make use of int to string, int to str of what? The class value, that is i. Okay. Then, and what is there? Then I have a string called i underscore. Okay. See, now this is covered. Now I have a string called i underscore, which is a string. So it's not to worry, it will concatenate directly. Again, I have a j value, which is an integer. So I have to uh, transfer that the data type from integer to string, the j value. And then next what I have, I have v dot jpg, okay? I have a string that is v dot jpg, sorry, v dot jpg yeah now i'm done with my source okay uh let me comment these statements and just show you what what will happen if i run this program I just i'll comment the statements okay and i will uh, remove this termination that is semicolon and now you can see what is the source yeah good i'm reading all those sources and all the paths so this is what i required so i'm reading all 10 into 5 images, right, here. Now what I have to do, just uh, remove this, and come in, take this, put it inside. So I guess now this makes some sense. But, but I'm not trying to store these features. This is very important. I'm not trying to store these features in an array. If I run this program as it is, no friends. <clears throat> so please mute yourself. Okay. Uh, once you go to the command window, you can see. 
feature, these features are not stored. Finally, if I look at the feature, the last value will be displayed. This is the problem. Uh, this is a feature. Only the last value has been displayed. Uh, what I have to do for in order to store the features and create the feature database, as I mentioned here, okay, as I mentioned here, uh, I have to create this feature vector or feature database. So how how I to do this? Uh, let me go back to this. I will I will I'll just initiate a counter. Count is equal to zero. And whenever I read the first image, I will be incrementing the count. Count is equal to count plus one. Okay. Uh, I've incremented the count. Uh, I will be keeping this here as a feature is equal to uh, feature is equal to. Uh, I will be using f underscore m. Okay. F underscore M, this is again another variable. I have all rows, remember. Okay, this is nothing but all rows. How many rows you have? Three rows, comma. The first column, say for example, in the first iteration, the count value will be one. Is it okay? The first column, the first iteration, the count value will be one. That means in the first iteration, you'll be storing the red, green, and blue means row-wise is equal to feature transpose is it okay so now what i have done i am trying to sir, store the sir yes is it possible to increase the font size sir oh so font size is not visible uh, yes sir. you can do control scroll or control plus one second No, in MATLAB it will not allow. On the keyboard you try, sir. Press I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Okay. So what is the other option? No, control. Uh, I'm trying to do up scroll, down scroll, control, control plus, minus, no. No, mm. sir. Sir. Yeah. You can use magnifier, sir. How do you use no, it? No, 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 it's not working. One second. Let me check. Magnifier this, uh, in Windows application. Yeah, I'm using it. I'm using it, but it's not. So in the MATLAB console, it will not allow. Uh, see here, I can magnify this, yeah? According to your visual perception. I think it's getting magnified, but here it, it's not allowing me to... Okay, uh, shall I copy and paste these commands and try to uh, do it on a notepad? So I think, uh, is it okay, uh, Suguma? Uh, if I, uh, I should, sir, you can copy the copy it and paste in a notepad or any word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, but because uh, I'll show the command and I'll run on the MATLAB uh, console. Okay, sir. Okay. Yeah. Okay, fine. Because the MATLAB tool is not allowing me to uh, increase the screen a bit. Sir, you can increase the screen size, sir. I'm doing it, but... Uh, yeah. No. It's one and the same. Okay, anyway. Uh, let me try to find the solution for this and next. Okay, is it visible now? Yes, sir. Okay, fine. Uh, uh, do you want me to repeat again everything? No, no, sir. You can continue. <laughs> okay. Uh, so here, what I have done is I have captured this red mean green value and I have created a variable called f underscore m. This colon comma count. This count is iterative and this will create number of columns. Okay, let me show you the output in the command window. So this is the program which I've written. So this is the loop, the outer loop, which is used to uh, iterate between the classes. This is the inner loop, which is used to iterate inside the class, that means within inside the class with respect to the views. And this to end, which closes this for loop. And this I have created. Okay, this is a small program. With, okay, if you people are uh, getting confused or if you people are not able to leave this, I'll be sharing these codes at the end of the session to your coordinator 
and this will be distributed to all. The only thing is you have to download the database and that, that I'll be telling at the end of the session where to download. Okay. So now, F underscore M, if I run this program on my console, now you can see F, uh, F underscore M. So what is F underscore M? Is it visible? I think this is visible. Yeah. Okay. So now F underscore M will have 50 columns. See here, I have 50 columns. And how many rows? I have three rows. One, two, and three. This first column belongs to the first image and red, green, blue mean values. So likewise, now I have to do the same thing for your query also, right? So uh, I will copy the same program and I'll paste it here. But now I'll, I don't want count right? because query is only one. Uh, I don't want path also. Okay, fine. Let it be. Uh, I'll remove this. So what I have to do, I'll read query image as query is equal to, I'll call it as query only, query is equal to I am read of, I have a query image has been separated from the database folder. I've created a folder called query. And these are the query images which is not present inside the database, but they belong to the similar classes. Remember, okay? They belong to the similar classes, but they are not present in my database. The same images are not present. You can see six, seven, eight, nine, and so on, the values of the views. So now I go here and uh, uh, let me type it here and then paste it. Uh, I think others are on not muted the uh, audio. I'll read the first image inside the query database one I underscore six B dot JPG. Okay, when I underscore six bit dot JPG is my query, which has been read from the query folder. And I shall go with uh, the same. Uh, I'll remove this. Now, instead of saying it as red, I will separate this from my previous variable. I'll call it as red Q and green Q and blue Q. And this as a query. Okay. So I'm just uh, just trying to play with the variables. That's it. No, uh, not an, even a single extra uh, syntax I've used here. The same. So this is my query. I've read the query image, and I've uh, computed the red, green, and blue values. And I shall make this as red Q, green Q, and blue Q, and red Q mean green q mean and blue q mean is it okay and here this is red q m now i'll copy this program i'll go to matlab console and i shall uh, paste it i shall paste it here okay, i'll run this program okay now what is F underscore M? F underscore M, I have the feature matrix or the feature database. And what is F1? F1 is a query feature. Now I have to compute the similarity distance between the first column and the, the first column of F underscore M. Likewise, the first co uh, second column and the feature vector. Likewise, third column and the feature vector of the query. So I have to compare these values Okay, F1 values with all the feature vectors column wise, which is present inside this F underscore M. So I'll be using a distance metric. Okay, I'll be using a distance measure, similarity distance measure, which is uh, a Euclidean distance. I'll be using Euclidean distance for calculation. This is my testing phase. So now I will uh, use. Uh, a for loop, the similarity distance measure, similarity distance measure, SIM is equal to uh, SIM plus. This is a Euclidean distance. I'll take the absolute value because I don't want any uh, decimal values. It will confuse me. So what has been done, it should be between F1 and 
Fm. Understand? So similarity Euclidean distance. I have the formula, and this formula. Just don't worry about the formula here, right, because it will take some time to explain this. Uh, so this Fm f underscore m equal to uh, I'll have uh, j comma i. Why? Because I have how many? Fifty. So similarity will be measured in terms of uh, uh, for i is equal to is it one to fifty? I am trying to measure. I have fifty images in the database, and uh, I have to uh, initiate a variable s i m is equal to zero. And here I will initiate a count one is equal to zero. I tell you why it has been initiated. And uh, here, once the similarity has been initiated, I will use a for loop. Why? Because I have three values. Okay, remember I have three values, so it is three features. That is red, green, and blue, which will be used. Okay, and uh, after this, I'll be using uh, Z. So this Z is my difference value. Z is equal to count one. How many difference values I'll get? I'll get fifty difference values. Remember, okay. So this is an equation. So this loop is based upon the equation of Euclidean distance. Okay, this, I think, uh, mm, I'll copy this. I'll go to program. Once I computed the feature query feature, I'll paste it here. Now this is an equation. So I'll just simply run this program. I have simply computed the Euclidean distance between f underscore m and f one. Okay. I'm getting some error here. Count one is equal to zero. Count one is equal to same. Okay. Okay. So now, yeah, I'm just. Uh, Trying to compute total number of images. It is fifty, right? So this is fifty. Okay. So now I had f underscore m is of three cross fifty. I have f one, which is one cross three. Now I have z. So this is a z value, which has been computed using Euclidean distances. And I got this value. So, which is minimum out of this? So, which is minimum? So, how to compute? So, if I use sort of z, okay. If I can use sort of z, this is a command in your MATLAB. So, if I use sort of z, so let me clear the screen. Now, if I use sort of z, I get the sorted value. Now, I have the sorted value is 0.0231 is the Least value. Remember, 0.0231 is the least value. But from where? From where? 0.0231. Luckily, it was a least value here, the first object. But it may be randomized, right? It may be a random value. So I want to store the index values of the least value. So I would create two variables called a comma b is equal to sort of z. Now in A, I'll be having a sorted value, okay? But and B, I'll be having the the index value. Just for an example, I have a variable called z is equal to. I'll have a variable values called ten to one point uh, uh, okay point three twenty five five. So this is my z value. Okay, z is an array with. Some uh, random values which consists of both floating point as well as integer values. Now, if I simply say sort of z, and see now, sort of z gives me the sorted value, but I don't know the index value here. This is my index value, so I should get the index value as one, two, three, four. This is the fourth index value which appeared to be a least value. So now, what I need to do, I will have two variables. That is a comma b is equal to 
sort of z okay now if i see a a is a sorted value good what is b b is an index value see here the least value was at the fourth position so i retrieved the position 4 right okay so i'll go back to my program okay i'll go back to my program so which image i had given i have read i will call it as a space b is equal to sort of z so what will be in a so a will be a sorted value and what is b b will be an index value okay. now what is z z z is a difference difference of uh how can i put it i got to put this uh, difference of uh, 50 images right so i'll i actually call it as 50 difference values okay 50 difference values a z is equal to i could say z is equal to difference value of first image difference value of second third fourth fifth okay then next sixth which belongs to the second class the difference value between the f1 and the fm of the second class like by 7 8 9 10 11 is the third class 12 13 14 15 likewise it will go till 50. these are my difference values which has been computed I shall post those difference values just uh, just a second. Give me a uh, let me get that z value. Yeah, I have the z value. I'll post it uh, on the notepad. You may see. Uh, you may visualize. Okay, I have it here. Okay, can you see this? Z is equal to this is the difference value which has been obtained after f m is f1 minus f underscore m of first image i shall post it is it okay and this this value i obtained the difference value between f underscore m of two this is the second one and this value this is the difference between f1 and f underscore m3 where it is happening here f underscore m j of i what is j j belongs to the first class and i i is nothing but the three values okay that is red min green min and blue min likewise the last image the last value would be the difference value between f underscore f1 and f underscore m of 50. So I have 50 difference values been obtained after Euclidean distance been computed between the query feature and the feature database. Now I have this a comma b also. I have this a comma b. Let me just uh, sort value and copy this and put it here. Okay. Uh, I'll be using this set of commands in order to dis display the retried image so you have uh, a comma b is equal to sort of z so what i will obtain b of one b of one is nothing but uh, let me just copy uh, the b values also the value. 
since I have changed a couple of uh, things here, uh, I declare the path outside and uh, I shall take this path here. There was a small problem. Let me just try to rectify. Give me a moment. Okay, yeah, I'm getting it. So what is B? So I'm just trying to copy the B values obtained. Uh, so I have this uh, class value and A comma B. A is a sorted values and B uh, is the index. So this is the B, okay? These are the values which has been obtained by B. So B, this is an index value one. So how do I get the class value and the weave? I just, I'm just concentrating on the class value first. So how do I get the class value? If I obtain the, this value, so this is my least value from this index, because this is my, the very uh, difference value which was least. And how do I obtain the class value? The class value is can be obtained by taking the number or the value of B of one, which is the first element of this B and divide it by number of views. How many number of views? For every five views, see here, for every five views, for every five values, my class will change. For first five, I have the first class, then the next second five, I have the second class. Likewise, third, fourth, fifth, till 50, I have 10 classes. So I will get the class value if I divide this first value by five and I will obtain a class value. So here in this case, it is B1, is one divided by five, you would get 0.2 and seal is used to round it up to the next highest value. So it will be one. So what is the class value? Class value is one, according to this example. What is the reminder? Reminder of this would be zero. Again, what is the, how many number of views? I uh, considered five. So the reminder would give me to which category, to which view it was similar. So as uh, for this, I have considered the query image as 1i underscore 6v, okay? So 1i underscore 6v, if we do a manual interpretation here, it belongs to the first class, do you agree? And it belongs to the sixth view. Here, according to my sorted value, I would get one as an answer for class value and the view, the number is one again, okay? If I try to uh, compile this in MATLAB, so I would get one and and one is the answer. So this is one I, which belongs to the class, and this is one B, which belongs to the V, or a particular value of that class. So this is similar, the query image which you are given, why one I and four six B is very much similar to the one I and score one V, okay? I'll just go to the database. Here I have the database, I have given the query as this image, I just try to blow this up and given this as a query image. So it has become a similar to this one I underscore one V. And I use comma display commands, plot commands in order to display those values. So once you run this entire program, you will get okay, you will get a figure window which gives you a query image and the retrieved image. This is the retrieved image. Uh, let me change the query image to 7, okay? If I change the query image to 7, 1 I underscore 7 V. So I would get, this is my query image and the retrieved image is this one. There are some failures, okay? Uh, I, I would, uh, if you remember, I had given this image, right? So I have given this anchor image at the beginning of the session. Let me go to change the values of 3i third class and this belongs to the third, uh, sorry, seventh view. Okay, is it present? 13th view. So I'll change it to 3i underscore 13v. So now if I try to display, you could see, yeah, this is my query image but I have retrieved this fish image, right? So this is the failure of your image retrieval system. Though I have not considered 
the strong features. What I have done is simply I've calculated the mean. If you understand, I have simply calculated the mean. Yeah, this is my feature. Uh, definitely, it will not work. This feature of red, green, and blue would be of similar. Why? Because this this consists of background also. The mean is of background also is taken care. The object sometimes the object that is a foreground object uh, uh, shares a similar color with the background sometimes, and the uh, object shares a similar two different objects shares a similar color. Okay, so in these situations, color is not recommended in order to retrieve the image. So color. So what what is that you are going to do? So I have to generate a feature vector which is of different features like color, combination, color, shape, and a texture. So if my feature which I have generated can include color, shape, and texture. Here it is not red, mean, green, mean, and blue. Mean. Instead of that, I have all color, shape, and texture shapes. Say for example, I use some segmentation algorithms and I calculate the color. Okay, uh, say Laplacian operators or edge detection or something else. Right? And I get some values and I put it in this feature vector. And texture uh, I may compute using uh, wavelets. Uh, uh, okay, and uh, different techniques or uh, different transformation techniques. And uh, okay, uh, I get some values and I put it in this feature vector. Okay, so now this fusion of color, shape, texture, and now you try to evaluate the system with respect to color and shape and texture, then see how many images has been treated properly as per the human uh, intuitions. So what is the what is the change that you are going to do? You are going to have the same set of program. But instead of calculating red, green, and blue here, uh, now you, your intentions are different. Now you you have to think about how to obtain the shape features, how to obtain the texture features, and you can have the same program f underscore and and you use the same uh, Euclidean distance equation in order to compute the difference between the feature vector as well as your query feature. You I hope you understood this concept. Uh, now. At the end of the session, I have uh, told you. Just let me show you the CSV file uh, of uh, the database. I shall close this text file uh, and I'll close this window also. And let me go to let me uh, yeah here. I would share this database with you people so that you can work on Python in future. So I have a CSV file which has been generated. So, oh sorry, not this one. Oh, this one. By the time it is getting opened, uh, I shall go to the MATLAB uh, command window. Is it visible? Uh, one of your coordinator may speak. If it is visible, just let me know. It's visible, sir. Dr. Shoguma, is it visible? It's visible, okay, sir. Uh, yeah. Uh, see, but I have given a small task to one of my students, one of my UG students, to read all the images in Caltech 101 database, which you have seen in my, uh, during my uh, initial presentation. I had nearly 1,000, uh, 9,164 or 65 images, 1, 9,145 images. I have asked him to create a CSV file reading all the images. Okay, this is how he has created. This is my first image. Remember, this is my first image I have created. He has created, and uh, he has mentioned it as red, green, and blue. Okay, the mean values, and the last value, the last column is the class label. This is this belongs to the first class or first image. Likewise, he has created red, green, and blue values. Okay, this is this belong to the second class. Likewise, he has created to all the classes. So this was a, a huge task. Okay, he has simply created all these values. Now he can use this CSV file to train machine learning algorithms and to extract the class labels. Okay. That I will. Uh, I'll do one thing. Uh, once uh, this session is completed, I would uh, definitely like to share the video, the self-recorded video on um, uh, implementing a machine learning algorithm on the same red, green, uh, blue values using Python. That I'll share the self-video 
uh, self-recorded video of three or five minutes. You can watch that video as a complimentary at the end of the session. I'll share with the coordinators. Okay. And uh, yeah, the, uh, coming to the last portion, as many of you people are wondering, uh, there are so many things, there are so many commands and lines been written here, but how as a user, if I'm trying to use this, okay, what are the things that I need to change? So this would become uh, uh, the obligation for me to change some values and to uh, see the output. Okay. So in order to avoid this, so what I'm going to do, we are going to create a small application using GUI. Though you have not understood so far, okay, uh, though you have not understood so far, you uh, treat this uh, remaining 20, uh, 10 to 20 minutes as a fresh session. Okay, anybody can do this. So just simply type guide on your command window. Okay, and uh, wait for some moment. Uh, that's what we can do uh, till it get opens. Uh, this is a simple GUI application. I'll be using the same command. I'll be copy paste the same program. Uh, yeah, this is a small guide quick start, uh, the window which will appear. Now click on create new GUI. Okay, I, am, I want to create a new GUI. That is a GUI option, graphical user interface and say, okay, you will get a grid. You will get a UI control grid. One second. Give me some time. Yeah, so this is a figure window. This is a grid. Whereas you can copy and paste. You can just uh, try to drag and drop the, the push buttons or uh, the pop buttons or the access buttons. Uh, let me take some push button. Okay. Uh, first, I'll take some edit button because user is intended to give how many number of class values. So this is my edit button. Uh, just double click on it. Just drag and drop from this console. Go to edit button and drag and drop on this console on your matrix on your workbench, you can say, and double click on it. Yeah, I'm getting the properties of this. Here it's, it has become slow. Okay, just kindly uh, bear a few moments. Yeah, here go to the string. You can change. Like what is that you want user to edit here? You can you can ask user to enter a class value. Okay, so what is the class value for with respect to our example? The class value is ten. Enter class value. Is it okay? Now just say okay. So you'll get an option. You are trying to direct user. Okay, fine. You have to enter a class value in this edit option. Now take the second uh, edit button. What do you want to have now? I want to have the view value, right? Go to edit string and edit the string. Uh, enter enter uh, a view value. That means how many images per class you want to train. I hope this is okay. Now, this is enter view value. Now, I will have two push buttons, one for a train and I will have another push button, the second push button for test. Uh, change these push button strings also. You can change it to, this is a push button one. I can call this as a train push button. And uh, double click on this push button and uh, change the string from to test. Okay. So as uh, per our previous discussion, now again it has been changed into two categories, phases. One is train and the second one is test. Now, you want some images to be displayed on your screen, right? So I'll be using an access button here. I will place the query image here. I will ask the query image to be displayed in this portion. That is an access one. And I'll ask the retried image to be displayed in this access two. Understand? So now these are the two figure windows which will be displaying my, you can use a static, uh, text to say this is my mm, this is my query image this is a static text this won't change the values will be not this the values will not be changed this is my query image you say this is my query image and you may have another uh, static text here and you say this is my retrieved image 
retrieve image. Good. So now GUI uh, is done. So if you want, you can decorate your uh, with your static text. Uh, say this is an online FTP program on IRES. FTP on IRES. So you may you may just try to decorate whatever like you may change the colors also. You can uh, change the background colors. Okay. Uh, and uh, you may change the font size, whatever you want, you can do it. Okay. Now, once I run this program, once I run this program, it obviously it will ask to save. And uh, I will save this on my desktop. I'll call it a sample FTP GUI. Once I run this program, see uh, uh, a very important note a MATLAB. File will be generated with this simple FTP GUI. You can see this. Uh, this is my console now. Uh, MATLAB commands will be generated. Carefully observe this. You don't have to worry about this uh, uh, this uh, preamble. You just come to this. I have a created. I have created my GUI here. If you can, if you carefully observe. Okay, so this is where you have to dump your training part of program. This is where you need to dump your training part of program where you generate F underscore M. So this part will be generated. So F underscore M will be preserved. And go to push button 2. Here you have to copy paste the testing part of the program. I have mentioned in two separate parts. Copy and paste your testing part of the program in push button 2 and in push button 1 copy and paste your training part of the program okay and simply run this program so now if i run this program one second after copying training part of the program and testing part of the program you will generate this gui i hope it is visible so kumar is it visible Yes, sir, it's visible. Okay, okay, okay. Right. So now I will change this class value to 10. I will change this number of views to 5. Now I am asking my system, my Jira application to train the system. Now it is getting trained. Just wait for something getting appeared here. Why? Because it is in a training process and it will display how many images has been trained totally. Okay. Oh, yeah. It is getting displayed as number of images trained is 50. Now, I have created an Azure application in such a way that user will be allowed to browse to select the query image. If I click on a push button, so it will prompt user to select the query buttons to select the image. So it will go to uh, go to a browser and I will go to a Caltech 10. I'll select the query image as say I will select the second airplane image and wait for the similarity distance measure been calculated and the class value been obtained and the query uh, sorry the view value been obtained and the query image and the retried images will be displayed in a moment yeah so this is my query image and this is my retried image so this will be asked from the user side so now see here user is not confused with so many applications the user has been given this gui what he need to do is simply he will click on this test and he can do uh, multiple uh, retrieval thing, uh, multiple uh, retrieval thing in order to obtain. OK, fine. So I'm getting uh, uh, some instructions from one of your coordinator. Uh, th there may be some um, small uh, confusions due to the text appearances, though it was very small in text, smaller in text. I would definitely like to share this PPT along with the program and the data set. So yeah, uh, uh, thank you uh, one and all. Uh, let us uh, try to complete this session. Okay, uh, there are some future research avenues. Uh, segmentation techniques can be explored for complex background multiple objects. Since I have used only color shape texture, so it is not satisfactory to retrieve the similar images uh, according to user perception. So investigating classification performance using HMM, SVM, various neural network architecture, application of machine learning and deep learning techniques. I would definitely like to share the self-recorded video with your coordinators after this session.
which will be using Python and uh, on that CSV file. So once again, I thank uh, the coordinator, uh, Dr. Suguma, uh, and uh, management principal, head of the department of Vishnu Institute of Technology, Bhima Varam, Andhra Pradesh, for giving me an opportunity to uh, conduct this uh, small FTP program on image retrieval system using MATLAB. Thank you, one and all. Thank you, sir. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you. Um, on behalf of uh, Vishnu Institute of uh, Technology, uh, I express uh, my deep gratitude and thanks to you, sir. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Sukumaran, sir. Sir. Are you there, sir? Yes, sir, yes, sir. Sir, can you propose a word of thanks, sir? Sir, uh, before that, uh, can you ask any doubts from the... Person? Yeah, if... Uh, Participants, if you have any doubts, you can ask. Uh, okay, uh, on a small. Uh, Hello. I just wanted uh, to convey my uh, regards to Dr. Sugama because uh, when he asked uh, that we are trying to host uh, multiple domains and multiple simulation tools. Uh, this was a small session, which even uh, here and there, because this is a very huge platform and this is a very huge uh, uh, research area. Everything I cannot bring it on a single day or one hour. Uh, what I can do is like uh, I'll do one thing. I shall be sharing the videos or uh, as a post, as a reply post on your YouTube link. You can just go through that, and it may be useful for you. Or you may come back to me. I have. I'll leave my. A mail ID and contact number with my uh, friend Dr. Sukuma so that you can always contact me anytime. Okay, sir. I'll share the links of different databases, uh, but definitely I will uh, share all the necessary things which will be asked as a query on the YouTube link. Thank you, Anita. Okay. Is there any question? I could uh, definitely, I am uh, willing to take the question and answer. Okay. Sir, why do you evaluate the performance, sir? Uh, yeah, I had the slide, in fact. <laughs> I was running out of time. I could not. Yeah, here. Uh, see, the performance evaluation, the procedure is very simple. Whenever you get a database, you have to divide it into two categories, train and test. Say, for example, with respect to CANTAC 101 and 256 data set, you have to decide uh, uh, 15 and 30 images per category as a train and rest as a test. This is a standard experimental procedure. And metrics, I can use accuracy, precision recall, F measure, retrieval, uh, recognition accuracy as well. Okay, So these are different metrics in order to evaluate the performance of your system. Uh, as an example, say I have 10 images for, as a query. Out of those 10 images, I have retrieved seven correctly and three uh, wrongly. Okay, So that means 70% is my retrieval accuracy. Likewise, precision recall has some formulas. You can just try to apply those formulas and you can evaluate the performance of the system. Yeah, that was a good question. Yeah, because it was not covered in this presentation. Yeah, thanks for asking. And uh, I guess it's a purpose of query. Hello? Yeah? Yes, sir. Sir, if it comes for video, how the retrieval could be done at a faster rate, sir? Any Okay. Uh, yeah, say the, the video is a time series data problem. So the video, as I've said, an image, you can treat the frames of a video, right? You have, say, 25 frames per second creates a video. As per NDSA standards, it should be at least 25 frames per second in order to generate any video without, to avoid a flicker. So now, if I say a frame of a video, that is the first the second, you have 25 frames. You take individual frame into account in order to have a multimedia information retrieval. Uh, you can have this for human activity detection, as I said. You can have the background subtraction first, then try to extract the features, then take those stable features and try to retrieve similar frames from the video. It is not a video, it's just like a, uh, if you just try to arrange images in time series, it will create a video. And again, you are trying to direct to the same problem of one frame as uh, understood as in one image. 
it is one frame as one image you just apply any algorithm see uh, you have jpeg you have uh, uh, come across jpeg algorithm which is a compression algorithm you have mpeg also which is a video compression algorithm right madam so if you say okay. jpeg as an image compression mpeg as a video compression mpeg at its lowest version the jpeg has been applied to each and individual frames so that becomes an mpeg or mpeg 7 So treat video okay. frames as an individual frames, individual image, and then try to. Camera in the uh, laptop. Okay, fine. So. Yeah. So sometimes yeah. the camera in the laptop doesn't capture the images properly, and what could be done? Okay, so you're talking about the video cam, which is not capturing. So uh, that depends upon the problem, madam. See, if you are trying to be very specific about. Uh, the uh, hand gesture recognition or hand movement or uh, a face recognition and you are trying to capture the image to your laptop so that might be a problem assuming that problem so you have to go with the image enhancement restoration segmentation first then you try to exploit the features from that uh, process image then you serve the purpose of uh, feature extraction and then try to solve the face recognition or hand gesture recognition problem okay okay sir thank you You, you have to go with the enhancement techniques if that would be the only solution okay okay fine sir yeah many people are worried about the certification after the feedback link so uh, dr sukumar if i have any more questions to take i i'll be online so any more questions Okay, Raghavan sir. Hello, sir. Ah, yes, ma'am. Hello, somebody by name Harisha okay. shared her screen. Please stop sharing. Harisha. Hello, sir. Can I ask you? One minute, ma'am. Wait. Uh, somebody sharing the screen. Harisha, can you stop sharing your screen? Okay. Sir, you share your screen, sir. Then it will automatically. Okay. Yeah, yeah, madam, you can speak now. Somebody wants to ask some doubt. Can I ask some doubt? Actually, uh, now we are doing with the CMN only. So, what is the benefits of using the normal one with the CMN? How the optimization is increasing, and then down, and then uh, if you increase the number of uh, what the data set is increases, then which will be beneficial for this? Uh, sorry, but I did not get your question. Can you come again? There was some, there was some disturbance. Madam, your voice was very low. Yeah, there was some disturbance. Uh, so nowadays we are using CMN. CMN, okay. Hello, now it's yes. okay, sir. How do you? Uh, nowadays we are using CMN for this, for the accuracy, and then error checking, and then uh, all these things. Uh, but uh, this is not. We use only the normal one frame and tested to test uh, that is accuracy for it. But if you use the number of data sets, then which will be the best one? Either the CMN or normal one? Okay. Yeah, yeah, I got your I got your question. See, uh, Madam is asking about if you have a huge amount of data set, like say you have a uh, uh, rows together, millions together images, say, like. Uh, Present in Google or YouTube or Netflix or Amazon, like you, you can have many servers across the world. And the madam question is like, how uh, beneficial it is with respect to convolution neural network or any deep learning techniques for that matter, or machine learning techniques. Madam, I would uh, suggest you one thing: how big your data set is, or how big your number of images is in your uh, any server. Uh, it is. It depends on your feature extraction technique, computer vision algorithm, and deep learning techniques. As you said, CNN. CNN is very huge. It has got different levels of architecture. As in, when you change the uh, layer, uh, layers or number of layers, there itself you can have so many accuracy with respect to any algorithm. But I would say, if you are very good at feature extraction. any small distance measure metric or neural network architecture like it may be a grnn a generalized regression neural network feed forward uh, or pnn probabilistic neural network would perform much better than your convolution neural network or any conventional methods so make sure what is 
the feature that you have extracted, as I suggested, whether it's the color, shape, texture, or any feature, right? Like, and then you feed it, uh, divide it into train test. Usually, I recommend 0.3% of train and the remaining 70% test in order to measure the accuracy of your system. Okay, so thank you. Sir. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, welcome. Now I request uh, Dr. Sugmaran sir to propose out of thanks. Thank you sir. So it is my pleasure to uh, thank you all for this uh, uh, wonderful online one week uh, faculty development program on advancement in communication engineering technologies with simulation tools. So I am very much thankful to our chief patrons, Sri K. V. Vishnu Raju, Chairman sir, Sri or Ravi Chandran, Vice Chairman, who is the Aditya Visham Secretary. And uh, I am very much thankful to our uh, Principal, Dr. B. Surya Narayana Sir, our Vice Principal, Professor K. Srinivas Sir. And uh, my sincere thanks to our uh, beloved uh, HOD, uh, Dr. N. Bhatmadi Ma'am, and uh, all our uh, faculty members, especially our uh, Technical Committee, Mr. Abdul Rahman and the senior sir and the monastery man. So my sincere thanks to uh, all the resource persons uh, who accepted uh, with their uh, tight schedule, uh, starting from uh, Ms. Smega, uh, research scholar from City University of London, and Dr. Raghavendra Kumar Chaudhary, IIT Dunbar, Dr. Mahandeshar uh, SJDIT, Bangalore, uh, Mr. Uday Shankar P from DLF, and Dr. Anita Varam from HABIT, Bangalore. Uh, so not but not, not least, uh, my sincere thanks to all the participants. And uh, thank you all who all contributed for this FDB to make it a success one. Thank you all. Yeah, thank you, Sudhamaran, and uh, I thank the management and all the participants for being a part of the session. Thank you very much. Thank, thank, you, sir. You, sir. thank you so much. Sir. Thank you, sir. Bye-bye, sir. Okay, we are closing the session now. Uh, the feedback link is provided in the uh, chat window. So the link, uh, the session will still remain uh, open for 5 to 10 minutes. Please, all of you, fill the feedback. The feedback link is also provided in the YouTube live link. Feedback link is again provided, sir. Please uh, check, sir.